Welcome to this series on F-Sharp, where we're going over concepts to help you get started building F-Sharp applications. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at how you can use classes and interfaces for object programming in F-Sharp. As a reminder, any code that you see in this video can be found at aka.ms slash F-Sharp 101 samples. Let's get started. The first concept we're looking at are classes. You can think of a class like a blueprint for defining an object. Now these objects can have properties to define them and they can have procedures or methods for performing actions. Let me give you an example. Let's think of a car as a class. Now this car could have properties like the make, the model, and the year. And it could have methods such as start, accelerate, and stop. Let's take a look at some code to see what classes look like in F Sharp. If I wanted to define a class to represent a code repository on GitHub, I would start by using the type keyword followed by the name of the class and any parameters that I might need to construct my object. In this case, I'm using name, which is the name of my repository, and stars, which is the number of stars that my repository has. Now, a class can contain many things. For example, a common way to define private properties or methods is by using the let keyword to bind values and land up expressions. Private access in this case means that I'm able to access them inside of my class definition, but not outside of it. With classes, you can have multiple constructors. In this case, I define a constructor that takes no parameters and initializes a repo object with a blank name and zero stars. If you want to expose properties and methods publicly, define them as members. In the name example, I'm creating a read-only and immutable property that is assigned the value from the name parameter. If you want to create a mutable property with the ability to get and set its value publicly, use the val keyword as well as the get and set keywords. Static members are properties or methods that don't require an instance of an object. Finally, you can have methods to perform procedures. As you can see, inside of our class definition, we're able to access our instance properties by using the this identifier, as well as our private properties and methods. To use static members, you can use dot notation on the class name followed by the method. In this case, print help just prints something out to the console. To create an instance of your class, use its constructors. To access members and methods of an instance, you can do so by using dot notation as well. In this case, I'm getting the name using the get repo URL method, assigning the value 3000 to the stars property, using the increment stars by method, and then getting the stars property. The next concept we're going to look at are interfaces. You can think of an interface like a class without an implementation. Interfaces define behavior that's shared across objects. So basically, they tell you what should be done, but they don't tell you how. Because classes represent objects, when they implement an interface, it's their jobs to determine how something should be done. Let's take a vehicle as an example. You might have a vehicle interface with a behavior of starting the engine. Now, the interface is not gonna tell you how that engine should start. And there's a wide variety of vehicles. So you might have a car and you may have a motorcycle, both which are vehicles. How the engine is started is up to the car and the motorcycle to decide. So that's basically how interfaces and classes relate to each other. In F Sharp, there's this other concept known as object expressions. Object expressions simplify the process of implementing interfaces. Let's take a look at some code to see how interfaces look like in F Sharp. In this example, I want to implement an HTML parser. For convenience, I'm using the F Sharp data package. My source can either be from a file or the web, so I need to have different implementations for each. Interfaces are defined like classes with the type keyword. The main difference, though, is their members are abstract and only contain type annotations. In this case, parse HTML is a function that takes in a string and returns an HTML document. I can create a class to implement the interface for both web and file sources using interface and with keywords. To expose interface members publicly, I add them as methods. At this point, I can create an instance of each class and cast them to IHTML parser to be able to use them interchangeably. 
Note that if you implement multiple interfaces in a class, casting to a specific interface will only make the behaviors defined by that interface available. Here's where interfaces come in handy. Because both classes implement an ICML parser interface, I can create a function that takes an IHTML parser and a source to return an HTML document. Then I can use the same function with both the class web parser and the class file parser. As you noticed, in both cases, the output was identical. Object expressions simplify the process of implementing interfaces. Object expressions are enclosed by curly braces and use a new keyword followed by the name of the interface and interface member implementations. The resulting expression is bound as a name value. Notice how we didn't implement additional members to publicly expose the interface members and the type is already IHTML parser without casting. Now that I have my IHTML parsers, I can use the parse HTML function on them as well. In both cases, you see that the output is identical. Now that you know how to define and create objects in F Sharp, in the next video, we're going to take a look at how you can create collections of them. Then, we're going to use some of the collection built in functionality to apply transformations to these objects. See you in the next video.